The next session, Industry Speech 3, Mobius, Personalized Learning at Scale, will be given by Ujwal Gandhari, TY Manager, Technology, Digital at India. Please come forward. Curating an experience for a student where you are able to share content or give education to student that is suitable for all students in a classroom. Now, that is a very uh, tricky thing to do. But that is something that is absolutely needed. Like different students will have the very different requirements that they will have, uh, both in terms of content or in terms of questions. And that is an experience that you would want to give your students. That will be something that will be very ideal. Uh, and if you can do that, it will be great uh, for your students. So now, how do we go about uh, implementing something like this? More importantly, who goes about implementing something like this? So that is what I'll be speaking about today. So again, every student has a very unique need. And again, as educators, you would have faced this a lot during the time that you have taught or you would have instructors that have taught extensively. And uh, very basic concepts, some students might want to, might need to practice it five times to move on to the next thing. And for some students, just uh, because I've understood this very, very well inside the class, I just want to try out once and move on. Now, how do you sort of create an experience that suits both people, right? Majority of the time what instructors will do is they'll create like a big problem set of practice questions and they'll share it with students. So, this happens with content as well. Like there might be some students who would be like, who like a lot of examples, that's how they understand. Some students who like video based content. Some students like text based content. Some students prefer taking notes, handwritten notes inside the classroom. Some students don't want to. So how do you sort of go about catering to everybody in the limited time that you have? So in the technological advancement that we've seen for the last, I'd say, since COVID has sort of accelerated, but we've seen a lot of technology being integrated, but the, so the resource materials available to now faculties and to students is so much now that's available. Again, it was still available, but at least the access or the knowledge of it being there is a lot better now. Uh, but the time in a classroom hasn't changed. The time that a student needs to study also hasn't changed. So just me now having 10 things to study instead of two doesn't really help me anymore because I only have that limited amount of time to uh, do something about it. So what can we do in this case? Like it's both content and the kind of practice that you would want a student to do. Ideally, it should be personalized. So now a bigger question would be, Sure, it needs to be personalized, but whose responsibility is it? Like who gets to personalize it? Who should be in charge? So again, do we leave it up to students? Because ideally it's great, right? You leave it up to students, students get, because it's student who needs personalization. So students get to figure out, you give them a lot of content access and they get to figure out how they would want to study. But obviously that's not great because if you leave things to student, uh, the delivery will obviously not be up to the mark as you'd want it to be. Now, uh, would you want to uh, basically rely on parents? Uh, that also is very tricky. Uh, again, it could be for even higher ed or for uh, school education. Parents are not ab absolutely in tune with how instruction is supposed to be needed. No matter how much they're involved with studies, they can never be in tune of what is actually needed. So even relying on them to provide this personalization isn't exactly uh, feasible, let's say. A lot of time what does happen is you get outside help. So some people would need tuition, so you'll get a tuition teacher, right? Or I'll go to some classes somewhere, I'll do some sort of preparatory course. Could be for any sort of material that you're studying. Now, these can be a lot more personalized because it is Again, the classroom experience is very different. You have less students that I need to cater to. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, I have great, I can ask whatever I want to. But there also there's a problem of consistency. Again, you're exposing teachers to two different kind of instructors. So it's not necessary that both instructors would have the same process of teaching. So it might be clashes as well. So still, giving more access to course material doesn't necessarily mean that now students will do better. So, but again, the question comes back to who then is in charge? Now, 
ultimately you're left with teachers and I know we have a lot of teachers here and they'll say like we have already so much job we have so this is another thing that I have to worry about now. I mean I understand it's a challenge but there is no way out. It is only a teacher that can create a direction of what a student has to study. It cannot come from anywhere else. If it comes from anywhere else, it, is, it will not be effective enough. So the direction of what a student studies will need to come from the instructor. So now let's see about why teachers we've talked about, right? Consistency, extremely important. But obviously challenges, like where do teachers get the time to do all of this? That is a very, very big challenge, right? Already inside classroom, there's so much work to do, right? You already go out, you have lecture, or lecture notes to take, you have papers to grade, so many administrative tasks that you have as well. So like, why do you have the time to do something this big, something like this where already you don't have enough time? Then effort as well, like, you are currently, as teachers, you are paid to teach student inside a classroom experience, right? Personalized, teaching is primarily supposed to happen outside. So then how do you actually make the effort of te basically taking care of something that is completely outside your uh, prerogative, right? You're basically in charge of delivering inside the class learning. But personalized, as I mentioned, it is not possible to personalize a lecture for 50 students. Can't be, it's not possible at all. So you will need to sort of take time outside the classroom to do it. Uh, try and basically curate an experience where when a student is studying by themselves, they get a little bit of more options uh, and they get to basically access the material that they would, they would uh, the way that they would want to. Now, I would want to talk a little bit of how, a little bit about how you're trying to incorporate something like this. So, uh, as I mentioned, I'm from a company called Digital Ed. Uh, we have a platform called Mobius. Uh, it deals with a lot of personalized learning experiences. So what, uh, it is sort of like an LMS in terms of how you deliver content, but we have very specialized features that let's uh, create this specialized experience for students. So I'll take you through uh, a sample lesson now. Uh, again, I won't spend a lot of time. I know it's post lunch and it's already been a long day. Uh, but uh, I'll take you through a very simple sample lesson just to make sure that uh, uh, trying to convey what it is that we are trying to do. So it's a very simple uh, lesson available on the platform. Again, topic here doesn't really matter, right? You can implement the same sort of things across all different topics. But let's say if I'm explaining something like this to a student. Now, this is very theory oriented. Uh, you need student to be able to visualize things, you need student to be able to go through. So instead of actually, after the inside class experience, instead of just sharing a PDF to a student, could be notes, could be PDF, could be a full lecture recording as well, uh, that again restricts a lot of that a student can actually do. So in that, in, in that case, what you can actually do here is give an environment to a student where a student can go through content Firstly, very important at their own pace uh, because there might be students inside the classroom that are not able to pick it up the way that everybody else is. They need a bit more time to go over the same content, right? So you get, the student gets the ability to go over it at their own pace. And in addition to this, there might be students that have not understood this yet. So give the student the ability to try things out right here. Just to make sure that this, whatever they've read, have they understood or, not, understood or not. So they get to try it out, get feedback on the same, and at each step they get these self checks. So there might be students that have done well, they can move on. There might be students that haven't done well, they get to go back and go over the content again. So you're able to curate this sort of an experience. And again, this can never come from somebody else. Like, where to actually place these breakpoints and these checkpoints is only that an instructor can decide, right? I cannot decide it for you. Even another instructor cannot decide it for you as an instructor. Now, there might be students, as I mentioned, like you could incorporate videos. There might be students that might need uh, interactive applications to understand something like this. So you give them the ability to do that as well. So, student clicks on animate and he actually gets to visualize what's happening. Obviously, he can make changes to 
the application and that sort of will overwhelm the application. But again, somebody might try out one use case, somebody might try out four and five. So that is what you're trying to uh, give to the student. Now, another sort of example that I would take is something that's very similar, like a very standard numerical, right? Uh, this will happen for all uh, age groups. Uh, you'll have a question, you'd want a student to try it out. Uh, student tries it out, maybe student gets it wrong. Fine, you can provide feedback to a student, right? Uh, but that isn't enough. That would be available in textbooks as well. Student tries out a problem, maybe he tries it on a piece of paper, gets it wrong, but then what? I cannot try out the same problem, I already know the answer. So, I can try out a different problem now. Similar problem, different values. Maybe I make a different mistake now. No worries. I can try it out again. Again, this is a probably a simpler question. You'd want to layer this down into multiple steps, you can do that as well. So maybe student got stuck at step one. Next time he got stuck at step two. And he's able to do it for as long as it takes him, right? To get right. Uh, maybe somebody did not get stuck at any point, right? They tried it out once and they can move on. So that is sort of an experience that you can actually curate. Uh, and that is something that's absolutely needed for a lot of students. Uh, there will be students that you get from a lot of your colleges and to your schools that come from very different educational backgrounds primarily. They have very different level of competencies as well. So to be able to give them, uh, like teach them in the same sort of way will be very difficult for them to adapt. So obviously you have very limited uh, scope to do that in a classroom because you have limited time and you have another restriction of completing the syllabus as well. So what you do get to do uh, or can do is try and utilize the time outside the classroom uh, to deliver an experience that students get a lot more options with. But more importantly, that isn't sufficient for you as well. As you as instructors, sharing content is not enough. Like, I can tell you this is great for students, right? But why is it good for you? Because you are, as instructors would have spent the time to curate this experience, right? So it can't just be good for students. It needs to have something for you as well. So with that, you can actually get very detailed analytics on the same. So if I'm able to provide you an information that, okay, this question on average student tried out four times. Every student tried out this question four times. Very simple uh, information that I, you've been able to, I've been able to give you, but that does tell you a lot about what sort of information that a student took from this they needed to get it right four times, or they needed, they had to practice this question four times to actually understand this. So even something as simple as that can provide you a lot of in information, and through that you can make a lot of interventions with the in-class experience. So the goal for us is pretty simple. We want you to, you to be able to provide uh, an experience to a student where student gets more support. And additionally, it is not just for students, that's why I'm not sitting in front of students right now. Uh, students do get more support, but you as faculties too get to understand how students are learning. So you get more information about what they are doing and then lets you make a lot of interventions. Uh, so again, this is a small uh, portion of what we do. Uh, we do have a boot down uh, just outside the gate. So if you want to talk a little bit more about what I mentioned here, or if you want to talk about something else, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, and that's it. That's all my time. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. For the felicitation, I would like to invite Dr. Jamshed Barusha, founding Vice Chancellor, Sai University, Payanur, OMR Chennai. Round of applause, please. Thanks to Mr. Ushwal Kantari, DY Manager Technology, Digital Aid, India.